Hi everyone, I see there's people uh, on already. We'll just give it, um, let this run for a little bit and see if more people will jump on. And then also I can set up my workspace. Hello, hello. I think I got everything. Try to be prepared, but you know how the lives go. Hello. Hey everyone, it's Tiana from the Maniology team with our weekly live. Every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time, you can find us here on another nail stamping journey. Whether it's a tutorial, technique, or hack, we're here to discuss the details and I'm so happy you could join me. So, um, another live that I'm super excited for, but before I just get into all of that, I just wanna um, thank you guys for joining, but also if you do enjoy these videos and the content we share, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on these lives. And don't worry if you, you know, didn't make it, you can always find these videos on our YouTube right after they're done. So the Met Gala was last week. Did any of you follow? Let me know in the comments. Today, I actually had some other plans for nail art, but um, I instantly changed my mind because I had inspiration, you know, inspiration kind of took another direction. And um, so naturally, I know a lot of uh, magazines and everything was talking about Blake Lively's um, beautiful, beautiful gown that she wore. And um, that's what inspired me to go ahead and um, want to do a nail art. Here, I have some really cool pictures. We can go ahead and take a look if you didn't get a chance to see what this um, beautiful gown looked like. So when she first came out, like it had this really beautiful rose gold bow and you can't even see the front of the like the bodice of this dress is so pretty. There you go, that's a much better, much better look at how ornate and beautiful this dress was. Dress, gown. <laughs> and also the fact that it was designed by Versace is just a, a bonus for me. But when that bow got taken down, oh, cool. that's what it looked like. So this dress is just so gorgeous. You know, I love turquoise in general, but not only that, it actually has like that gorgeous patina from like the Statue of Liberty, which is what the inspiration was for. And um, <laughs> Versace returns. Um, and then also all the geo geometric designs from the actual dress itself is kind of, a, um, you know, kind of a, a reference to like the New York City uh, architecture. So um, yeah, that's basically what I did. I was inspired by that. So the nails that I'm gonna show you to do today looks like this. Okay, let me just get this all set up on my hand so you guys can see. So here is today's design. So um, a lot of reverse stamping, as you can see. And I also wanted to do a dry brush technique um, that kind of replicates the train on the dress. And everybody say hi to Ren. Ren is going to be helping um, my silent partner today. Uh, Dev is taking a um, much needed vacation, and um, but she'll be back soon. But uh, Ren is joining us, so everybody say hi to Ren. Okay. So per the usual, let's go ahead and get situated. Here is my lotus mat.
and I do have my, tip, my nail tips here. So I separated it because I'm going to need the space. Um, these three, I'll work on the dry brush design. This is going to be my two reverse stamping. Um, because the intricacy of the reverse stamping, I did do a design already. So, you know, we don't have to be here all day, but I will show you how to do at least one. So the wonderful polishes that I will be using today, just kind of give you a brief overview. I have Chestnut, which is this beautiful dual chrome. This is what I'm going to be using to pick up the design, the stamp design. And in the reverse coloring, I'm going to be using these beautiful colors here. So um, from left to right, I have Ginger Snap, Magic Hour, Cozy, and Delphinium. And as the base for the reverse stamping, I'm going to use Retrograde. And I'm also going to be using this as the base for the dry brush, which is Doll Dance. And today's plate. is going to be brought to you by M020. This is a collab plate that we did with the Nailosaurus and I'm going to be using this gorgeous design here. So I see people asking about my um, nail polish. Actually, I mean my nail polish. Actually, it's not nail polish, but it does look kind of close to Ginger Snap, huh? So actually I'm using powder on my nail. This is not a powder that we sell. It's just a a product that um, I just recently picked up. So, but it does look a lot like Ginger Snap though. Okay. Let's go ahead and put that down. And let's just get a, get a start with the reverse stamping because that's the part that's gonna take me the longest and like I said I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys um, how to get it started I already did pre do two of my snappers here but that's because this particular design does take quite a while there's a lot of small pieces and a lot of intricacies um, the concept is easy because it's you know a pattern but uh, just a lot of small tiny details honestly my I was getting cross-eyed doing this so let me just make sure I'm cleaning off my stamper I have my ice cube stamper here today like I said I'm gonna use that design so let's go ahead and make a start I have my chestnut here it is a dual chrome but with such thin lines it just has a really deep brown to it So before I get into that, let me go ahead and uh, paint the base. Too, which is from Retrograde. So I'm just going to put a light coat of Retrograde onto the nail tip, which gives it like that beautiful um, metallic sheer metallic more of like a I wouldn't say like a multi-chrome but it, it does have kind of like a bluish green gives it like a bluish green base okay so I'm sorry if it, it's going to get a little quiet because there's a lot of focus <laughs> needed for this particular design but we can just go ahead and watch and um, here I'm going to be using my 
my Lazy Palette, which is from the two-in-one squish, squishy stamper. You guys know how I'd like to do. <laughs> Let's make a start. So funny, I like to have like these guides and stuff, but because it's reverse stamping, I have to think backwards. So the first color I'm gonna use is Magic Hour, which is this um, metallic kind of silvery rose gold. Reverse stamping is, oh, I should, we should do a video on that just like that's probably the best way for you guys to see so just looking at the design like this I'm gonna go ahead and do the farthest left um, block just gonna color that so nice to see that you guys have made friends in here while we did the lives Okay. So the block that I'm talking about is actually more of a triangle design. So I'm just coloring in that design there. I'm taking these colors from the dress itself. The gown had a lot of like these beautiful rectangular and um, triangle like shapes on the front. And when I saw this design, I was like, that's perfect. So let me do a few more so you, and I'll turn it over so you can see what it looks like. And if you're wondering the brush that I am using, this is our detail brush, um, a rainbow detail brush perfect for fine line designs especially like this <laughs> some brush um, heads can be way too bushy and that's not the kind of um, tip I want I need something that's extremely fine tipped just like that okay so here can you guys see what that looks like so far you can kind of see the glistening color of the magic opera when I turn it like that. Make sure to also keep your brush as clean as possible. If it starts balling up the polish, make sure to uh, clean that with an acetone. I just like to keep a damp acetone uh, cotton pad around just so I can clean this and like I always mention too when you're doing reverse stamping you want to make sure that your polish stays wet okay so you don't want to be putting chunky almost dried up polish or tacky polish on your designs because that can lift up the polish underneath and this has very intricate you know straight lines and those designs those straight lines mean a lot <laughs> to what the final design is gonna look like. So we don't wanna be lifting up or warping any of these straight lines. So you can see kind of how uh, tedious this can be, but the final product is so, so worth it. I'm just gonna go ahead and put some more Magic Hour on here. 
just because again you know I'm trying to keep the polish wet I don't want to work with tacky tacky polish and working under these lights it can tend to dry out really quickly so I'm really trying to color into these lines and not go outside Try not to breathe too, too much. Keep my hands as steady as possible. So for any of you that are mothers out there, I hope you guys had a wonderful Mother's Day. Even doggy moms too, or cat moms, animal moms. Maybe using a magnifier might actually be a good idea. I'm not saying my eyes are getting bad, but um, maybe I should have been doing it under the studio lights. I was doing it at my desk and the lighting wasn't all that great. I think I could have used, afforded to use these studio lights <laughs> instead. Okay, so here. That's what the design looks like so far. So for Mother's Day, I was surprised with a brunch. I love brunch. I think that's probably my favorite favorite meal time. There's not too many brunch options here though, I feel like in Hawaii. And um, we've gone to this restaurant before, but uh, it has some really good pancakes and um, some really good like hummus and just really good food and good company so my husband and my um, son took me out that was really nice okay so I haven't moved on to any other color I'm still using magic hour okay that was kind of a big dollop. I didn't need something that big, but that's okay. I'm almost done with this one color. So um, do you guys want to hear what my initial idea for today's nail art was going to be? Let me know if you guys want to hear what my initial idea was. I'm still kind of stoked about it. I I feel like I'm always behind the eight ball just cause you know, I can't like watch TV all the time and just like binge. But um, let's see. Okay, so next color, T, what is the next color? Is ginger snap. So my initial design was going to be doing a Bridgerton nail art. How many of you are, uh, are Bridgerton fans or have you guys at least seen the show or heard about it? Give me a comment. Um, I am just a, I love like uh, English period dramas. I'll always watch. So I was like, oh my gosh, I really, you know, finishing uh, season two, I binge watched the whole season one and two. So like I said, you know, I was behind the eight ball, but um, yeah, I was like, oh, I want to do a Bridgerton. Uh, oh, I, I won't talk about any, any of the details because I, I know there's probably some of you who um, maybe still need to watch it or don't care, but anyway, um, I'm a fan, love I, the casting, the story, the, and also I like Shonda Rhimes. I think she's uh, great. I'm also a fan of uh, Scandal. So, I 
I guess uh, I was just thinking about this. Maybe I just like intense love story does not um, story intense love stories. Yeah, intense uh, relationship. Watching it on TV. Yes, so Bridgerton is a Netflix show. Actually, I think it was like the number one show for a little bit too. Um, so when I decided to kind of change up my queue, you know, of course, I think we all have a long waiting list. My normal go-to, and I know I've said this before, I love true crime, so I was like, yeah, change it up. And then I found Bridgerton and I was like, oh my gosh. And... Um, Shoot, what was that other show I started watching? It's the Hulu one um, with L. Fanning. Let me know if you guys know which one I'm talking about. Anyway, that one is pretty funny too. But that one is not like English. That one's like a Russian period drama. Oops. Okay, that's okay. The Great. Thank you. I knew you guys would know. <laughs> okay, I made a boo-boo on this one. I put a little bit too much of the ginger snap. So much to reverse stamp, but that show is really funny. But yeah, so if you guys would still like to see a Bridgerton inspired nail nail piece, let me know. I'll tell you guys how behind the eight ball. I'm just sharing this just because you guys would probably find it funny. But um, so I know like the book and the movie came out a very long time. I know, don't don't come for me, but um, Fifty Shades. I'm not quite sure what the reason for me, to, you know, I wasn't recommended to read it, but I know for a while there was like a lot of hoopla about, you know, the movie and the books and stuff. And I just, I'm reading the books right now. So that's how behind I am. That's what the design looks like so far. I can tell you so far, I think I, I'm enjoying the books more than the movie. Yeah, I know people, okay, so for me, I don't, um, read very often just in general i am not i'm not a, a fan normally so i i usually do like audiobooks just because i'm spending a lot of time in my car driving around and staying in traffic and yeah so I know oftentimes there's just more detail in the book than there is in the movie, but I like movies. I'm not even done with the Harry Potter series. Reading the books yet. I need, I need to jump on that too. This video was not sponsored by Audible. <laughs> I wish. Audible. Hello. Hi. I think the last... 
Potter book I ended up with was four, I believe. I'm not quite sure. Okay, so the next color we're gonna use is the Delphinium, which is this beautiful kind of turquoisey silver metallic. So like in such small capacity, it looks a lot more um, just turquoise, like a cream color. But um, I really love this color. I feel like with Audible, it really depends on the narrator. I didn't think I was actually going to like the, um, the narrator for Fifty Shades but I think I got into her. So, you know, I'm already on book two, I'm invested now, but at first I was like, ooh, the cadence and all that kind of stuff. Actually, I'll stop um, listening to books if I can't get with the narrator. So like, I know one of the books that I haven't completed, like the series, I have um, the Hannibal series like um, Hannibal Lecter and after I read Silence of the Lambs they changed the narrator and I was like mm -mm. that guy was so good <laughs> okay. but I know there's other you know um, options out there like my husband right now, he's uh, really loving our uh, public book system, our public library, public book system, <laughs> our public library. So he's been kind of reading some um, or renting some books from the library. So he's catching up on like, uh, he's a Star Wars fan. So he's catching up on all like the Star Wars books and stuff. My husband, he's like all into comic, comic like things, but Star Wars books specifically. He was a, um, what do you call? Can't think. Stephen King. He really liked Stephen King books and stuff. Stephen King, a little bit too long winded for, for my personal taste, but. My husband loves a cozying up to a book. Having a toddler doesn't really allow for that. <laughs> so audible books it is. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you guys what that design looks like here. I like dark stuff, um, dark thrillers, I guess, things like that. Um, I'm trying to think of the last series. Like the girl with the dragon tattoo kind of thing. Oh yeah, let's not go into the, the true crime stuff because there's actually a lot of books that I've uh, use with my audible credits, but I've actually haven't read So I need to to jump on that uh Oh, I just saw I missed a uh, gold ginger snap It's okay. I can cut. Oh, I missed two see talking and working it Doesn't quite mix but that's okay so you guys can recommend kind of dark thriller kind of things or any true crime books, go ahead and send it my way. I would love to look into them. It's pretty much what my podcast, my podcast situation looks like too. I don't want to tell you guys because I feel like, um, 
Well, I've already told you guys I like true crime. So, I mean, you guys, any anything having to do with that, I've, I like to listen to. I was kind of on cults for a little bit. Found a new favorite podcast. I liked um, talking about people and their cult stories and stuff. And how they got out of it. That was very interesting love always going back to like the what I would consider you know the oldies and stuff so my favorite murder um true uh what do you call it? crime junkie put a little bit more delphinium because this sucker is drying on me. Let's see. Yeah, if I wasn't doing a live doing this, um, a book or a podcast is probably what I'd be listening to on top of music, but. Or perhaps a movie that I don't really have to pay too much attention to because I've already seen it like so many times. So what do you guys think of these colors so far? Yeah, today's gonna be a, a long one. I'm almost done with this, so I'm, I'm happy about that. The next color I'm going in, oh, actually, I'm gonna fix my little boo-boo because I missed ginger snap in a few places. So I'm just gonna put a little bit there just so I can color those in and I can move on with my life, right? True crime nails live. You know, honestly, nails take so much concentration. I'm wondering if I'd be able to tell a story, like a true crime story, and do nails at the same time. What do you guys think? I feel like I'd have to do a voiceover for that. Would that be something you guys would be interested in? Hint, hint, wink, wink, maybe on my, my side, as a side at home project, I could do that. I'm sure maniology wouldn't want to be a part of my craziness <laughs> of true crime tales. Wonder what the boss is thinking. Ren, what are you thinking? <laughs> He's probably chuckling at me right now. Okay, so I'm going in with cozy. This one is like a really nice bronzy, but this is like a metallic. You can really see like all the the metallic um, shards in here. It's not as smooth as some of the other the other colors. <laughs> uh oh, sounds like I'm getting scolded from the boss. I'm loving the color selection for this. Um, 
No, no, no. So funny, just reading Brenda's comment. We've been working together for quite a long time. So I've been with the company for, shoot, I think this year, forgive the, the memory, but I believe I've been with the company as a whole for 11 years. So Ren and I have been working together for a very, very long time. <laughs> But he's definitely the mastermind behind our company, so. Okay. Can I do this without getting more polish? Let's see. Let me just get these bottom pieces. Oh, sweet relief when you're almost done with your reverse stamping. Yeah. Okay. So what do you guys think? That looks pretty. Give me some hearts if you guys like how that, that turned out. So just imagine this. I will stamp it onto the tip in just a little bit over that retrograde. Okay. Oops, that's some acetone, it's okay. So we'll just move that. As this dries, I know you guys probably know my technique already, but I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, what do you call, stamp that off so I can clean it really quickly. Okay, but what I'm gonna show you now is I'm gonna do these, um, the dry brushing, so with Doll Dance, which is this really light pale um, blue, I'm gonna go ahead and paint a base, a light base. And you'll see why, because we're gonna just, I love dry brushing. One, because it doesn't take a lot of time, but you know, I think in this case, if you look at the train, that's what I was really inspired by. And, um, Yeah, I thought the dry brushing was a really good way to kind of get that patina kind of um, finish, or my version of it. Okay, so we can kind of let that sit and dry for a little bit. I know, it'll be so cool when I, when I stamp it, watch. Now we just have to let it sit and dry for a little bit because basically what would happen if I went ahead and took this design, especially with all the hard work we did and just go ahead and stamp it, um, it's still kind of damp under here and I could actually mess up the design. So instead of doing all of that and uh, having my heart break, I'm gonna go ahead and use the technique that uses the sticky base, which is pretty much my go-to just because it kind of helps to ensure that uh, such an Did you guys just hear any sound, by the way? <laughs> Let me know. You know, we do our, this work on the phones and stuff like that, so I had a phone call coming in and I, yeah, never mind. Um, Okay, thank you. These are dry. Okay, I think I can go ahead and do this. So let's, let's see. So I'm gonna put a thin layer, but I'm gonna cover the whole nail with sticky base coat. 
and I'm just going to go over the retrograde. Okay. Let's see if I can do it over both nails. I just have to wait for that to not dry but get tacky right now it's too wet so try and get that so i have the one that i did and one of my pre-done ones here and my pink stumper Sniff test. Oh, okay. Still, still smells like polish. Yes, this is the moment of truth, Samantha. Sam Samantha. I'm so sorry, Samantha. You know, words. Words are still very hard for me. Okay, so let's see. Okay, oops. Let's see. Line that up. So this is the pre-made one I did. I'm just trying to see if I can get these two pieces to stick on the side there. Okay. So there's one. I'll show you what that looks like, but probably best that I don't talk right now and I just focus. This is the one I did for you guys. Okay, two. Okay, you guys can kind of see, but, and that was my bad. The center part was still a little bit wet, so if you compare these two, you can kind of tell like how clean all these the lines come out, and this one looks a little smushy, so womp womp. I rushed that one a little too too much, but what do you guys think with the retrograde as the background? Come on, focus, please. So many shiny things to, to focus on. Okay, so there's that. The base for this is ready to go. So what I'm going to do, kind of using the colors that we've already used here, I have some Let's go in with the cozy. I have cozy. And so with the dry brush technique, and this is why I love it, is because you're kind of just using what you have. So I try to take off as much polish as possible, okay? So don't worry about, oh my gosh, there's, there's no polish and it's getting all dry. That's kind of what we want to happen, okay? So I just want to lightly stroke onto the onto the nail. So you see how it kind of creates that dry brush effect here. Kind of takes whatever leftover polish is on the brush currently. And don't worry, I'm just lightly brushing it over the top. Okay. 
Okay. There you go. So we'll kind of leave it like that. And let's also go in with, let's see. I have the ginger snap. Let's go in with a little bit of ginger snap. And then you'll see I'll kind of lightly diffuse the look of this going in with a little bit of acetone. Okay, so now I'm still going in and doing that same dry brush. So basically this is all I'm doing. I'm just kind of lightly rubbing the brush, getting all that excess polish off. I'm gonna do the same technique, just kind of lightly brushing and feel free to, you know, you don't have to use the fat side of the brush. You can kind of use the thin side if you'd like. Okay. I love this technique. And if you go back in, let me see if I can pull that picture up again. Because that's basically what the train looks like in the back. It has like that brushed, dry brushed look. So I hope I'm kind of achieving that same idea. What do you guys think? Okay. And now I'm gonna go in with Delphinium, which is like this darker turquoisey blue. I'm gonna add some of this here. Yeah, dry brushing with um, gel, I th you would have to um, kind of cure it in between for it to kind of get like these same sh uh, brush strokes. So like a fast cure kind of thing. Okay. So it kind of adds a little bit. Again, going back to like the patina, if you think about like the Statue of Liberty Right, it's the, she was bronze, but then, you know, over time through corrosion and stuff like that, she started to get um, that turquoisey, uh, they call it a patina, <laughs> so. My new favorite word. I like the finish. That's all I'm doing is just trying to get some details and make it as random as you want. So that's what it looks like. You know, honestly, I guess if you really liked the finish, you could just leave it like this. Because I really do like the way that that looks. It kind of has a, like a really nice texturing to it. But what I'm going to do is um, I have my acetone bottle here. And I'm just gonna take my cleaning brush, which is, this is just from the turquoise. It's so loved. You can really see how loved it is because all the acetone is eaten it away, but I'm just gonna dampen the brush a little with the acetone. Okay, I'm not gonna saturate it completely. Okay, I'm just gonna lightly you know, take off the excess and stuff and just use the damp part to kind of just like lightly brush, kind of make more brush stroke like design like that. That's why I didn't really mind the sheerness of the background, the um, doll dance that I did. So I just kind of keep going in with that. If the brush is too dry, just go ahead and kind of dampen it up again. But basically all that does is it kind of brushes out and kind of makes it a little softer. Okay. That's pretty much it. 
don't need a lot of acetone for this. Okay, so you see right here, I'm just kind of dumping off the excess acetone and I'm just lightly brushing the acetone through, making it soft. So there you go. So I'm going to go ahead put all my tips together so you can see what that looks like. Okay. Now of course, like always, going to go through with my smudge free top coat. Yes, don't forget the smudge free, especially after you work so hard to do the reverse stamping. Definitely don't want to get it all smudged out. Okay. And even though we didn't do any stamping on those other tips, um, I do have my speed dry here, or you can use your smudge free, but because I have the speed dry, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, use the speed dry instead. And I love how the top coat just kind of blends everything in together. Okay. And while I clean up my area, of course I wanted to show you guys this, right? So here was my palette. There you go. Cleans right off. Don't forget to cap your polishes. Sometimes I forget. When the smudge free dries, go ahead and um, put another top coat if you want. You can even put your um, speed dry on after, after it dries completely, okay? Top coat is very transformative, I agree. I totally agree. Okay, so let's clean this off so we can look at the prettiness that is this design. So what do you guys think of the final? I think it turned out beautifully. Smudge free is bomb. It's so necessary. When you're doing stamping, not a smudge in sight, which is so vital, except my smudge, my personal smudge. But never mind about that. <laughs> but I think the colors of this so nice. I think with the retrograde, it really turned out nicely. And I think Blake Lively would be proud. So would Versace. So let me know. Please go ahead and try this out for yourselves. Um, please hashtag us. I would love to see what you guys end up doing. And of course, if you don't have any of these polishes, don't worry about it. You can go ahead and use very similar polishes if you have them. And um, I can just go really quickly through the recap of the polishes that um, I used today. And it's already in the um, description, so you don't have to worry about that. The link and everything is in the description. So for the base of this, we used Retrograde. 
we stamp to pick up the design with chestnut, which is this beautiful brown dual chrome. And coloring on the inside of this design, we used these polishes. Hey, I'm missing one. Okay. So I have Ginger Snap, Cozy, Magic Hour, and Delphinium. Those are the colors that were used on the inside here. And on the dry brushing, we used... For the base, it was Doll Dance, which is like that pale, pale blue. And have Delphinium, Ginger Snap, and Cozy as the dry brush technique. And of course, we topped it off with our smudge free top coat. So please go ahead and try these nails for yourself. Go ahead and tag us. Love to see what you guys do. Thank you so much for joining me because I don't believe there's any questions. Um, and thank you so much, Ren, for joining me today and helping out. Um, yeah, I think um, that's all for today. So I'll go back in the comments and try and answer anything um, that I see. But if not, I will um, see you guys in the next video. Bye.